right, let's talk about Clojure. Clojure is getting a fair amount of interest nowadays. It's a uh, interesting language. Uh, there are hundreds to choose from, so you as a either an amateur or a grizzled veteran programmer, you have to say, well, gee, what, what new language should I learn? And Clojure is a candidate among, say, a hundred. Uh, the t title of this talk call is called Why Closure Sucks. Closure is in a family of languages, uh, starting with Lisp, that are called substitution languages. Substitution languages have been around for 50 years. Uh, people have always been tantalized by them because uh, biological systems are substitution based systems. In other words, you start with a, a set of patterns and then you you substitute parts of the pattern, you make it longer and more complicated, and by many, many levels of substitution, by having things build sub-assemblies which then build other things, uh, you, you get fantastic power. But we're not in the biological world, we're in the computer programming world, so this advantage that Clojure has of being able to generate things that generate things, that build things, that assemble things, that run things, uh, it is a, is a very little value, uh, frankly. Because what we have the demand for is products that are understandable, reliable, maintainable, and closure it, it does not do well in that area. And we'll go through some of the other. The first major problem with closure is that it has a horrible notation that it inherits from Lisp, where it uses the parentheses to sequence the operations, and this notation uh, has proven to be unreadable 40 years ago. It was unreadable 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago. It's unreadable today. It's going to be unreadable for eternity. And until the Lisp folks just cut it out and fix their notation and you know just go back and rethink it and say, gosh, we really don't need those stupid parentheses uh, to sequence the computation. Let's uh, rewrite our grammar to make it read left to right. And suddenly, a new, the clouds will part and closure and this new version of Lisp will suddenly be the, the, great, the greatest thing since sliced bread. Until they fix it, it's really dead on arrival, in my opinion, because it's just unreadable. The first major problem with closure is that it has a horrible notation that it inherits from Lisp, where it uses the parentheses to sequence the operations. And this notation uh, has proven to be unreadable 40 years ago. It was unreadable 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago. It's unreadable today. It's going to be unreadable for eternity. And until the Lisp folks just cut it out and fix their notation and you know, just go back and rethink it and say, gosh, we really don't need those stupid parentheses uh, to sequence the computation. Let's uh, rewrite our grammar to make it read left to right. And suddenly, a new, the clouds will part and closure and this new version of Lisp will suddenly be the, the great the greatest thing since sliced bread. Until they fix it, it's really dead on arrival, in my opinion, because it's just unreadable. Said, Unfortunately, people who write closure, because it's very experimental language, people are, number one, a lazy, and number two, sloppy. And those two are, are really a fatal blow against the language. I mean, I'm looking here on the screen at some code that is inside Lighttable, which is, you know, the poster child of fantastic closure productivity that got so many people excited. They went, wow, Lighttable is, is the wave of the future. And then look at the code inside. I don't have a single line of comment on key sections of their code. Now, how are you supposed to understand that, improve it, maintain it? How is somebody uh, going to understand what this thing does when there's so few comments? I mean, this is the problem with picking a language that encourages the worst kind of hacker behavior, because uh, they don't care uh, about what happens. 
and and this is this is why closure sucks is that the people in it are this way and until they change their way and and shape up how how, how are you gonna get anywhere and this is a big one is that closure seems stuck in the 60s with a terminal interface I mean you know when Lisp was was started uh, they had terminals and they typed in a commands to the terminal and it would immediately execute it and this was considered mind-blowing because this is this is from the same time that people had punch cards and would only get three runs a day so you know this this seemed like space age stuff and so it was a very advanced thing in its day but it's still stuck there people are still thrilled to type in a line of code and then see it executed immediately as if people wrote one line at a time and tinkered with their programs in such a way I mean did Tolstoy write one line of, of War and Peace and then see how it went he would have never gotten anything out the door so this is the idea that that you're going to write in such tiny increments and then test it is uh, is is nonsense that that has no productivity to it at all you know a good programmer should be able to do you know a thousand lines a day they should just be able to write fluently as fast as they can type and then run it and have it almost all work that's that's the ideal of a language closure is so uh, tricky that yeah people have to tinker with one line at a time because they can't imagine what it's doing but the biggest problem here is that what where how are you supposed to do anything practical like an iPhone app or uh, something for the you know at graphically interactive people aren't on terminals anymore they're on touchscreen devices they're either on their cell phone which is a, you know a smartphone or they're on their PC or they're on an iPad you know, there's only three kinds of computers in the world, and the dominant usage has already swung towards mobile devices, you know, iPhone and iPad and so on. And uh, desktops are starting to sink, but for people doing serious work, yes, they still in front of a desktop because, let's face it, they need the big screen. Uh, it's, it's preposterous. You're going to run Excel on your cell phone? No, it's, it's crazy. You can't see anything. So, but the problem with closure is how are you supposed to build something that people are going to want when all you're doing is playing with character strings and doing text? I mean, yes, there's a need for batch processing, but if you're going to be just doing character manipulation, why don't you just use Python? It's so much easier to learn and read. The next problem that closure has is that it, it lacks structure. Uh, in conventional languages, you you write in a more or less hierarchical imperative languages. You write in a hierarchical manner, uh, building a tree of functions, and you, and you organize them into sets. It, it works just fine, uh, and you can build some very big products and still have it be manageable. Closure is becomes messy and ugly very quickly because. The bite-sized pieces that you assemble a closure product out of, these very small functions that are typically less than 10 lines. In fact, the closure people often have this kind of snotty attitude about how great it is to have short functions. And, and they say that anyone who writes more than 10 lines of closure is a fool and everything should be very, you know microscopic pieces. Uh, that's like kind of like saying, well, I want to build uh, the Taj Mahal, but I only want to do it out of sugar cubes. You know, wouldn't you want to use a bigger block when you're going to build a big system? Certainly, the complexity goes up, and the number of interconnections and dependencies goes wildly up as you increase the number of pieces. Uh, in any system, if you have cross dependencies, the more cross dependencies you have, the more difficult it is to model in your head what the thing is really doing and and it becomes beyond n squared in its combinations and at, and at that point uh, the large system collapses under its own weight because it becomes unmaintainable 
we've already seen that, that the conventional languages become unstable and uh, unworkable above a million lines of code because pretty much every product above a million lines never finishes ever it never goes to zero debugs it just it just keeps you know floundering around Microsoft and Apple both have more than a hundred thousand outstanding bugs in their bug database that they're never going to fix because they can't reproduce them they don't have the manpower they're only going to high priority ones it takes Apple four releases every time they release a new operating system before they achieve stability they're on 10.10.3 now that's their fourth release the first three were garbage they were full of bugs they crashed they hung they did all sorts of things wrong it often takes them six months after a release to get it finally stabilized and that's because the product is so big the thing is that closure doesn't look like it scales up well at all because products even small products like light table are are becoming frozen in time because it's extremely difficult to figure out how to improve it because you can't understand the small code base that it is now it's not even 10,000 lines and it's already unmaintainable and unknowable and mysterious and uh, you know products should should be able to reach very large sizes a good language will let you write a complex program in a systematic and orderly way if you compare Modula 2 or Pascal but just say Modula 2 versus last you know good version of Pascal it beats the pants off a of closure in terms of clarity reliability hardly anyone is using Modula 2 but that popularity is not an indicator of quality there are plenty of things that are popular that suck Closure doesn't address the big problems that are facing computer programming today. Reliability, maintainability, and variety. You need a system, uh, a programming language, where you can write code and absolutely know that it's going to work. There's a lot of academic research on systems to, uh, you know, different techniques for writing programs that are guaranteed to work. That you write the code out, the compiler checks it, and it says, okay, your code is going to work exactly as you intended, and there will be no errors of any nature, of any significance. And they have built little demonstration systems that do this. Now, the next thing is maintainability. To be a practical language, we've got you know millions of programmers on in the world you're going to work on a product for a while, you're going to lose interest on it, you're going to go on to something else, you're going to give the code to somebody else. Computer software lasts 20, 25 years. Easy. I mean, there's st there's people, st companies like Chase. I went in and got my mortgage redone, and the guy was having taking an awful long time to type it into the system. And, and I said, gee, what kind of computer program you got? And he turned around the screen and said, you won't believe it. And there he was running a DOS emulator on his on his PC uh, that was running a, or a mainframe terminal emulator. Anyway, it was it was unbelievable. It was 25, at least 25 years old. This uh, mortgage system that Chase is still using, uh, but it's maintainable, so they're they're using it. Uh, variety. You need to be able to write many kinds of programs in a in a programming language, and in this sense, I think Python beats the pants off of Clojure. Because Python can do so many kinds of programs. You need to do text manipulation. You need to do manipulating log files. You need to do HTML processing. There's so many things that Python does well. And if you invest in Python, you'll be able to use it more frequently. Uh, Clojure does not have very good variety. The fact that it can't draw on the screen, doesn't have an event model, doesn't have this concept of a timer and a frame rate. I mean, how are you going to make Pac-Man or a Pong? in closure. I mean, I suppose there are people probably who have done some games in closure, but by no means was it facilitated by the language itself. And that is why I come to the after studying closure, I really think it's a dead end for com computer programming. The, you know, the technical evolution of languages will continue and closure will not make it into the final round.